to the unit on history of visual merchandising. Before we begin the history, let us recap on our understanding on visual merchandising done in the previous unit. Visual merchandising is silent selling with an experience to the consumer. It encompasses storefront or the facade, in store, the sound, the light, the fragrance, the touch and feel of the material, the look and image, sales staff, recall value and sales. We would see in this video a recap of the visual merchandising theory studied in the previous unit. This unit deals with understanding the growth in visual merchandising and how and where it began. It also deals with the understanding of various formats of stores. This unit comprises of two modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learned. By the end of this unit, students will be able to review the growth of visual merchandising, describe how the changes in the formats of visual merchandising came with time and changes in society. The first module traces the growth of visual merchandising. It is difficult to trace the history of visual merchandising. One can say it began with the civilization, that is, when man began to settle and have formal trade. In order to do business and attract customer to him, in comparison to his competitor, he came up with various strategies of display and interesting and unique arrangements. However, there has been a fair documentation of the organized retail from 18th century. In India, organized retail came at a much later date. Years ago, it was not uncommon for the store owner to just display their wares on tables in front of the store to lure in customers. Many still do that today, which we call as Kirana stores or convenience stores, as you can see in this image. Arcades was a very gothic or known as colonial style, which was being used. A perfect example of the same in India is at Cannot Place, Delhi, as you can see in this image. Arcades were covered streets. Historically, they can be traced back to bazaars of the Arabian Peninsula and Asia Minor. The arcades were made of steel and glass and were experimentation with new materials. As the materials grew and new materials came into the market, there was new dimension to the growth of bazaars. The glass skylights, the main feature of the arcades, created a completely enclosed visual stimulating shopping environment. The grand expositions, which began in London in 1851 with the Crystal Palace Exposition, were originally meant to present and demonstrate the new technology. The exposition soon became an exotic and elaborate setting for fairs, as you can see in the images. The retailers learned that it was strategic to display the merchandise in open and not to place the objects directly on the floor, which is very common seen in India, but rather on platforms or pedestals raising the merchandise closer to the eye level. Visual merchandising that exists today has to do with the invention of the department stores in 1838. Aristide Busicat came up with the idea of creating a store that sold all sorts of merchandise attracted crowds 
and would allow people to wander freely about a town within a town. In 1838, he opened Le Bon Marché in Paris, but it became the world's first department store because of his innovation with distribution of goods in 1852. It wasn't long before this idea caught on overseas and others followed suit. In 1868, the R.H. Macy Co. was the first department store to have an in-store Santa at Christmas time. Soon after, Mr. Macy began decorating his large windows with huge displays that would attract the attention of passers-by and prompt them to come in and browse or purchase some of his top quality items. Macy also made headlines in 1866 when he promoted a female retail executive to the position of store manager. Marshall Field and Company was a department store dealing in dry goods store in Chicago, Illinois, that grew to become a major chain before being acquired by Macy's on August 30th, 2005. The Great Chicago Fire in 1871 destroyed the retail stores, but the careful and vigilant owners shifted and restarted the whole store. Bloomingdale's department store in 1872 had its humble beginning on the Third Avenue in the growing town of Manhattan and it has become the icon of elegance in America. In the years following the Civil War, New York, the Empire City, began to emerge as a sophisticated metropolis. One of the leaders in this renaissance was Liman Bloomingdale, founder of the Great East Side Bazaar. He was blessed with three great attributes, energy, daring, and imagination. As the nation entered a depression in September 1873, 18 months after opening the Bloomingdale Brothers, recognized the need to redirect the merchandise, merchandising policy to offer the best possible value for the least possible price. Visual merchandising became very popular since 2004 with the retail boom. Visual merchandisers thereafter have been exploring new strategies to allure customers. Now, let us move on to review the changes in formats and the effect this had on apparel retailing. In particular, we will look at street vendors, convenience stores and mom, mom and pop stores. Street vendors is a type that is very native to India, as you can see in the images. It includes the Foolwala, that is a flower vendor, Sabjiwala, that is a vegetable vendor, to the Pani Puri Wala, stationary or mobile. Stationary ones are the ones selling on street sides, mostly on footpaths. The mobile vendors have their carts and they move around from street to street. Convenience stores are the most common stores close to the residence. Most of the people still get their grocery from these stores in India. Today, to sustain the competition from department stores and supermarkets, they have extended the service to free home delivery. As the name indicates, mom and pop stores are generally family-owned businesses catering to small sections of society. They are small, individually run and handle retail outlets. There are various kinds of retailing formats. 
These include department stores, supermarkets, warehouse stores, specialty stores, malls, discount stores, e-tailers and dollar stores. Department stores are the general merchandise retailers offering various kinds of quality products and services. For example, West Side and Lifestyle. Supermarkets are generally large self-service outlets offering a variety of categories with deep assortments. For example, Big Bazaar, Reliance Fresh, a warehouse store as opposed to a warehouse club is a retail location with a limited variety of merchandise sold in bulk at a discount to customers unlike a warehouse club. Warehouse stores do not require their patrons to obtain a membership nor do they require the payment of any fee. Specialty stores are the retail chains which deal in specific category and provide deep assortment in them. They are the specialty stores. For example, Tanishk, which specializes in jewelry. Malls, the other type of retail format, are the largest form of retail formats. They provide an ideal shopping experience by providing a mix of all kinds of products and services, food and entertainment under one roof. For example, Forum and Phoenix shopping malls. The next type is discount stores. Discount stores are the stores or factory outlets that provide discount on the MRP items. For example, factory outlets of any brand. The customer can shop and order through internet and the merchandise are dropped at the customer's doorstep. This is the most picking up kind of format today. Here, the retailers use drop shipping technique. They accept the payment for the product, but the customer receives the product directly from the manufacturer or a wholesaler. This format is ideal for customers who do not want to travel to retail stores and are interested in home shopping. The common examples are Flipcart.com or Mintra.com. Last but not the least is another type of department store or another type, another format of store which is called as a dollar store. Anything you buy here is one dollar or in Indian rupees, it is rupees hundred. You have reached at the end of this unit to summarize, visual merchandising is everywhere right from the street seller to the luxury stores. Every visual merchandiser uses various display and att attraction strategies to attract his customer right from early days till today. Based on size, type and location, a store may be classified as department store or discount store. Thank you.